distribution unisolate the battery it's clicked so that means it's back on now will it start let's see no problem at all this one that's good flowering together again there's one cloud the other one is down here somewhere there's a 225 made a few adjustments we had problems getting the, the, the 260 was way pulling out out pulling the 225 but we managed to found it wasn't going quite deep enough so now they're more evenly matched because there is 35 horsepower difference between them well it's now monday afternoon we're now spraying some uh, pre-emergence this uh, winter barley that we were drilling last Saturday. Yeah, it's not too bad a seed bed, it's a bit rough in the old one or two places, but generally it's okay. I've got this field to do here, and then that field over there to spray before I then have to go back to our main farm to do some. Spray off the volunteers that have come up in the, the where the wheat is going to. Right, well, it's now about, I don't know, seven half past. Just spraying this, uh, the volunteer barley and wheat that's coming up on this field. Some of it's wheat and some of it's barley. So, yeah, I've got about 25 hectare field I'm in at the moment. So, because there's no tram lines, I'm using the old. Uh, GPS here, so I can do a little bit of filming while I'm, while I'm driving along. Right, we're now started drilling some some wheat. We're drilling a skyscraper now, 49 bush, uh, thousand gram weight. Thought we had uh, dressed in the not last Saturday, the Saturday before. So, but now we're um, on some bean land and it's incredibly tough. We've got the power hour over here which has been piloted today by my wife. Thanks to her for coming out to help us. And the plough is in the next field over here. I don't know if you can see them now. It's behind the trees I mean you see some seagulls up the top there but yeah. Yeah it's very tough so we had to get an extra power hour in here today. This was ploughed yesterday morning afternoon evening so yeah there were a lot of interesting comments in my video some of which i'll try to explain one person said how does the, um it know when you go from one row to the next row especially as you're not using the marks so you can see i've got the marks folded up every time i get to the end of the field which is what now i'm now on the tram line one which is the fifth every time we get to the end of the field i, I might be able to do so now open the window but down here on the side of the top link, see when it comes up. I'll hold that there. And then, as I lift up, it will see that little fire against it. Yeah, it's got a little tab down. Yeah, so it's got a little tab down. It then changes this, and it's now gone on to number one. So that's the power hour over there. Yeah, so it's got a little tab down. Yeah, so it's got a little tab down. So that's how it moves from one to the other. Now, because I have to manually lift the markers up, we still with this. So I push that down, and then the tremor on the back there has gone up and that'll be like that till I get back into the um, back into the next uh, into the next uh, mark which will be uh, four more because I'm now on one so I'll go two three four yeah and then back to five and then I have to manually let that down every time there has been the old one or two times so yeah, I uh, forgot to change it over but thankfully that don't happen very often because then I haven't got the mark for the um for the pre-m on the sprayer which i have to do hopefully pre-m and not post them which it was uh, on one field because i uh, because we had the bad weather and i just couldn't get on the field well we're now just up to 700 hours on my uh blue power tractor Time for another inspection. Just checking they're all working. 
here. They're all working. I've actually caught uh, caught my wife up here at the bottom, so I'm just waiting for her to do another bout. She's up the top of the field at the moment. Yep, she's now coming back. There's a while we're waiting. Let's have a quick look at the at the seabed. See where the seed is down here. It's not the greatest seabed in the world, but it's all. There's very few of it. Little of it sitting on the top. Very little of it. <laughs> at the moment, there's very little of it in the ground. Oh, there it is. There it is down there. There's a row there. Yeah, there's a row there. So yeah, that's all about about the right depth. It's your job to get the depth right on this field because it's the soil conditions vary so much. In some places it doesn't seem to be deep enough. In other places it seems to be too deep. At the moment I'm in the four and a half metre cocoon power. My wife is coming over again to help me. She'll be on this and I'll be on the drill, but I'm almost caught up with the with the drill that I had caught up last night so I'm just going to do probably three or four rounds till she gets here and then she'll come on here and I'll go back on the back on my blue power tractor on the drill Hi guys I just found a new place to hold my phone in the tractor underneath where the radio is so I don't have to hold it with my hand yeah, uh, about the difference between the 225 short wheelbase and the 230 long wheelbase. Apart from the obvious five horsepower difference, uh, the short wheelbase is about a ton lighter and about six to eight inches, which is 15, 20 centimeters shorter. So the wheelbase is shorter. So it does tend to bounce a little bit, a little bit more on the, when you're on the road, the short wheelbase does than the long wheelbase. But um, yeah, then on the field when you're ploughing, especially this year because it's a bit wet, it's a bit of a it does tend to scrab and spin a bit. But it's not it's not it's not too bad, and uh, it's ideal for top work. And obviously, it, it isn't it isn't too heavy. Um, but uh, with on the uh, the other tractors over here, but there's me and my wife I saw a few minutes ago setting off on the power hat. Um, she's got the 260 on that and we have the smaller one on the plow. For the simple reason that the 260, which is our tractor, the 225 is not our tractor. Some people were commenting or saying to me that uh, you've got a new tractor. No, we have not got a new tractor. The 225 is simply while our, and all the other 225 replaced the 230, and both of those tractors were given to us by our company because the uh, 260 has got problems with the PTO. So we do not own that tractor, it's simply on, well it's not hired because we're not hiring, it's just basically replacement tractors while ours is being fixed. Oh yeah, someone said about um, the on the plough, do we have the auto reset because of stones? No, we do not have, stones are not an issue on our land at all. So yeah, some, some, someone also said, um, do we plough most of our land or what do we do? Well, we used the sumo till it got too wet. We're now having to use the plough because it's just too wet to sumo. It just won't. We tried it on the on the field next to here where I was yesterday and it just would not. It was just like the tines just weren't doing a good enough job of burying all the trash. There's only bean stubble, so there wasn't too much to bury, but it, didn't, no, it, just, it just wouldn't work. And someone will ask how many litres of fill to, to drill. I wasn't sure if they meant how many litres of fill to drill or to do the whole the whole job. Well, at the moment, this tractor, let's have a look, is using uh, overall. We've been averaging, on this field we've done seven hectares, averaging 2.4 hectares an hour. And we've averaged, 18.5 litres a hectare of fuel. That includes like when you turn around at the edge of the field 
when you have to go for that field, that's the average over the whole field. 11.7 kilometers we've done. So yeah, that's what this is. I was on the power hour earlier and that is averaging about 13, 14 liters a hectare. And the plow, it, it depends what tractor it's on. If it's on the 225, it's slower, but that seems to be more economical. We've had it on um, on the 225, on this tractor, which is a two. No, I haven't actually had the plow on this on this one yet. No, because this is all down the drill. And also, yeah, I was on the 260. And uh, the 225 uses less fuel, just takes longer. So whether it's cheaper to run a 260 and take longer and have higher uh, wage costs and uh, it takes slower and then be more pushed against the weather or to have a bigger tractor which uses more fill but gets out of the drill quicker and wages cheaper. I, I really don't know. That'd be quite a complex, complex process to work out. But yeah, that, that I think that's averaging, according to what the driver told me, about, about 20. So we've got 20 plus 18 is 38 plus about, I think it was about 14, so 38, 48, 52 litres on where we are now, but we don't always have to stick that power hour in, so that's 12 litres off for a start, and then when you're on the, when you're on the, uh, on the sumo, that one, that one uses less fuel than the plough does per acre, you're probably down to about 15 litres, and then when you're going with the drill, you're obviously going a lot, a lot faster, so you're, you're down to probably 15, you're probably down to about, I'd say less than 30, or 13 as a maximum, so you can see the difference between the saving, if you can use the, the sumo and the straighten with the combination to what we're doing now. So it's about, what did I say it was? 20, 38, 48, about 52 for the way we're doing it now. If you take the drill out of the middle, I'm sorry, the power out of the middle, that'd be 52 minus 14, 52, 42, about 38. And then if you did it with a sumo and the drill, you're probably looking probably about 28. So that's the, that's the three uh, differences. Right, whilst on the plow now, so we caught up with the with the power hour, so now, yeah, she, now she's on the plow. I've just showed her how to use it, see how she gets on. have quite a following this afternoon with all these um, seagulls around. Uh, this is the benefit of GPS. I'm now doing this last last one in here. It's exactly the right width. I'm not missing any on either side. I don't know if you can even see if I was missing any anyway. I've also got loads of seagulls after all the worms. Here we are, it's now quarter past seven in the evening. The young lad's back from college. He's on the right hand side. That one there is him, he's in the plough. This one here, that's my wife, she's on the Marahara and I'm now on the drill. So we're now back to full strength work-wise numbers. So yeah, it's going not too bad. It's got a bit better as we go across the field. It's not quite as uh, lumpy and cloddy. Yeah, whether we'll finish this field tonight or have the heaven to do in the morning, I'm not sure. But we'll just see how we get on. So. 
but I'm very, very proud of my wife in the in that track today. You can see there. She's done first time driving a plough. She did really well. So a lot to be thankful for for her helping me out the last two days. She would soon be going home now because the power hour actually goes quicker than the than the plough. Because today, this afternoon, she's been on the plow which is over here and I've been jumping in between the power hour and this drill so I've been sort of like keeping up with the plow so I think once she's got the plow up she'll go home but yeah it's very good to have a wife that comes out and helps me when the situation needs so thanks thank you very much I've caught up with my wife, and she's virtually caught up with the plow. So I'll just have to wait for a bit. Right, it's now Thursday morning. Just out in the plow on the 225 Blue Power tractor. Just plowing this uh, headland on this field. Well, I'm now on the last round around the head under this first field wheat, first wheat field. I've got, you can see it's quite a, um, a turn on there. We'll see how the GPS cooks with this corner. Looking at the plan I've got here, it doesn't look a little bit too bad. Right, it's going straight, which is what it should be. You can really tell by looking at those. Turn around, stop. Oh, I just got this tank up. So obviously, uh, with the tank down, it the steering isn't quite so effective. But... What's my fingers on the screen? Oh dear. Not too bad. I think it might have gone a little bit wide. Over more over that than miss. So yeah, see it's now bang back on the line again. So. Right. I'm now doing a bit of rolling. It's now Thursday, and this is the field we drilled Tuesday. I've got, I've got the um, GPS set up at 9.95 meters wide. These rolls are 10.3, but how I've got it set is so. Because these are, yeah, as I said, 10.3 meter rolls. But there's set, so every third one I run in the tram line. So obviously, trying to keep compaction at absolute minimum. Where the wheels and the tram line go, that is not a, um, there's no seed there, so you don't compact anything. So one in three goes in the tram line. lines down there that's the angle it was uh, parahered at but yet if you come back off there onto this road you cannot see them lines so you can only see them after it's been rolled not before this is such a strange uh, feeling when the GPS actually takes you round the corner. Steering wheel's not moving. Tractor wheels are moving. Right, I've just started drilling on this field now. I've done it on the third round. Um, yeah, it's going not too bad. It's a bit tough at the top. But we now, I was speaking earlier in the video about. Uh, fuel consumption, how much it's costing and all that. Well, obviously now we're taking the power hour out of the middle. The plough is still going to be the same. I mean, the fuel consumption of this is probably higher. Let's have a look. Uh, instant. Oh. Well, we're at 20. Let's see if I can find the average overall. I don't know if that's the average for this field. Yeah, 
the field average 25.6 I think before it was about 20 so that's gone up 5 but we are saving the other one was, was 14 so that's uh, 9 less 9 litres less of fuel to get this drilled and 1 less pass so that's 1 less tractor less power hour and, and less uh, this fuel. So we tried with the sumo, but the sumo would sumo work fine. I mean, it wouldn't bury the the drill, wouldn't cope with the trash. It just kept blocking up. So, so that would have been the cheapest option. But obviously, that won't work. The ground is too wet now. So, I thought perhaps it had been dry this week. It's now Friday. We've had a fairly dry week, but no, it's still there's nothing to take the moisture out of the soil now. The crop's gone. You see, and it's not overly warm now. It's cloudy. We've had a little bit of sun this week, but not much. So. Yeah, it's going, it's going, we're, getting, we're getting along okay, so. Alright guys, I'm now drilling on the land that's uh, the back of our farm now. This, this land has just had the sumo over it, probably, I don't know, three weeks or so ago. It's now um, half past 12, Friday the 15th of October. We were talking about fuel um, usage per acre or hectare and that sort of thing. We're on here, we're averaging just below 10. 9.9 .9 there. Currently 8.1. So we're, yeah, we're averaging 9.9 .9 and we're averaging 3.1 hectares now. We're going, yeah, 8, 7.98 K which is virtually twice the speed as what I was going uh, on that other land earlier. So yeah, this, this the fuel, fuel uh, hectare to do this will be what I'm using now, which is 10, plus the probably 16, 17 of the sumo. So yeah, it's about 27. Composed that was 50 54 yesterday, so it's half the fill doing it like this. One tractor less, so one tractor less, one fill lot less, and uh, labour less, and also the implement you got on the back as well. So it's a lot cheaper if you can do it like this. A lot Just that with the sprayer, we had, we had an escape pig this morning and couldn't find it anywhere, it's just turned up, so I got out to get it because it came towards me on the spray and I was just noticing the angle on that boom I don't even know if you can see it but how good it is at following the ground there's a slight rise on this side here which will be the left hand side of the sprayer and if you look at that tip there it's just touching the ground exactly the same as that tip there yeah that's a good angle you can see how much this side's come up compared to that side over there. Right, the tines are getting through there, they're getting a bit shorter now, so we just had to make some adjustments. We just lifted this up, was in that hole, we lifted that up one hole, and we're all see so after it there and up the top there, and also the same the other side. And now we're just lifting the packer roller up one hole, so we just take that out. Of Take the clip at the bottom there like that, lift that out, let's move the next hole to there, put the pin in, and that's it. Now we're just going to try that. Alright, let's just play out this top edge in now, it's rather tough up here. It's now about 11 o'clock Saturday evening, so this will probably be the end of the video. So. Thanks for watching another one of my videos, hope you enjoyed it. It's slightly different this time, we're talking about um, various fuel consumptions and that sort of thing. So we're averaging now 16 litres a hectare. So that's sort of like in the middle on the power on the drill. So 